Midland, Odessa, and Big Spring. This is ABC Big 2 News at 10. Now at 10, we begin with that severe weather gripping parts of the country tonight. More than 12 million people are under flood alerts and watches from Arizona all the way to Louisiana. Like this video from Carlsbad Caverns, more than 150 people were stranded by floodwaters overnight. And taking a live look outside tonight from our Midland camera, parts of the basin may see some light rain overnight. We'll have our local forecast in just moments. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Rob Tuk. First, we start with ABC's Will Carr with how people are dealing with that flooding. Tonight, dramatic new images showing a surge of monsoon floodwaters raging near New Mexico's Carlsbad Caverns National Park. The heavy rain stranding around 150 people inside the park. Flash flooding overtaking one of the main roads nearby, sparking a shelter-in-place order. The Saavedra family was visiting the caverns from Albuquerque, exploring the caves with their kids when park rangers told them they needed to evacuate. Nobody knew what time we could leave. We thought maybe a couple of hours. We didn't realize we could be there all night. After hours of waiting, the Saavedra's finally given the okay to leave the park. It was almost midnight. In Utah, authorities desperately searching for missing hiker Jital Agnihotri swept off her feet when raging floodwaters suddenly overwhelmed the group she was with in Zion National Park. Only her backpack was found. Look at that motorcycle. In Moab, downpours turning roads no. into rivers. Overnight in Arizona, high winds and heavy rain. Lightning lighting up the night sky in Phoenix. It's been a very active monsoon season this summer. Every weather station in Arizona and New Mexico reporting above average rainfall. And that was Will Carr reporting. Now taking a live look tonight. At I-20 in Odessa, traffic is fairly light. The roads are certainly less slick than last night, but still watch out for pockets of water left on the roadways around here. Joining us now is ABC Big 2's Bridget Sarpong with a check in our forecast. Hi, Bridget. Hi, Rob. You got that right. Roads are not too slick, but for some areas, they are. We have some rain going on in Dryden, but not only there, we do have a couple weather alerts. We do have a flood warning in Eddy lasting until Wednesday, 3.15 in the morning, mountain time. But not only there, but also in Presidio, we are seeing some rain there. Another flood, flood warning lasting until tomorrow around 3 p.m. Central Time. I'll have more of this forecast later on the show. Back over to you, Rob. Thank you so much, Bridget. Now across Texas, we're finally getting that rain, and some areas really needed it during this summer's drought. But that and limited water from the Lower Colorado River Authority will cost some farmers thousands this season. ABC's Jayla Washington explains. It is just one step at a time for rice farmer Tim Gertzen near the Houston area. That's his mentality because you never know what a day out on the field will bring. As droughts worsen and get more intense, uh, the consequences for rice farming yeah. starts to be more of demand on that natural resource on water. The Lower Colorado River Authority, or LCRA, cut farmers in its supply areas off this season on July 1st. It's simply following its water management plan to help with the preservation of water. What happens when, when we get cut off for our second crop water is we're unable to grow the portion of our crop that we can grow the most efficiently and the most profitable. The consequence uh, to me personally is around the two and 150 to $200,000 in lost profit. So as you can see, they are chopping down their first crop of rice, which is in fairly good condition from what my friend Ralph here tells me. But still, this season there has not been enough rain and there's just not enough water. Well, this is second crop rice that's growing right now. But this field doesn't have any water for second crop, so this is going to die. Now, luckily for Gertzen, he does get some of his water from a well on his property to help grow crops. But that's not always enough to get the job done. And it isn't something that's sustainable for all farmers since building a well is so expensive. Now, as Gertzen tries to figure out how to use less water to grow his crop, he grapples with the reality that there are other things that will make his job much harder. We don't have extra water. We're all Already having to fight over it to bring new businesses into a state that's already struggling I think is really irresponsible 
Now that was Jayla Washington reporting. The farmer Jayla spoke with tells us they're always trying to figure out ways to use less water to grow rice, like new methods that require a shorter growing season, or even permanently reducing acres where they are planting crop. And developing tonight, a potential mass shooting in Washington state that police say witnesses helped stop. Police say a 30-year-old man brought multiple guns to the Base Canyon Music Festival attended by more than 25,000 people. Details now from ABC's Morgan Norwood. Tonight, a massive sold-out dance festival in Washington state, the target of what police believe could have been a mass shooting. On Friday night, the Grant County Sheriff's Office saying witnesses tipped them off after they say they saw a man in the parking lot inhale an unknown substance or gas from a balloon. They say he then loaded two 9mm handguns, putting one in his waistband, the other in a holster. Security didn't make contact with that person. They were able to disarm the person and told him what's up that he's arrived to take him into custody. Authorities say the suspect identified as 30-year-old Jonathan Moody had asked concert goers where the exits were and what time the crowd would be leaving. And if his intention was to shoot up people, there would have been about 25,000 people inside the concert. He never made access to the concert venue. Overnight, officials like promising ramped up security on day two of the festival. Taylor Pascal was there. Definitely not really feeling very safe right now. Pascal, an avid rave and festival goer, says she contemplated not going back. The close call now has her on edge. This is like really like a lot. This is like really like the only place where um, like people can go and like really feel like accepted. And that was Morgan Norwood reporting. And closer to home, the Coberson County Sheriff's Office announced a felony drug bust today. The Sheriff's Office shared these images saying a search warrant was executed in Van Horn. Deputies found guns, drugs, and fugitives. Multiple law enforcement agencies were involved in the raid on the suspected drug house and arrested four men. All four are facing multiple felony charges. And well, a rainy weekend, which was great for our flowers and our lawns. Will the rain continue into this new week? I'll have that answer after the break. And our 30 and 15 high school football previews continue tonight. We've got a pair of six-man teams ready for that challenge. That and more ahead in sports. And we have pro highlights from the Diamond on deck tonight. We'll be right back. accident. His recovery took months, but he never gave up. And the joys of our marriage and adopting our daughter Audrey showed me the depths of his love and commitment. Hard work, perseverance, and family. That's what defines Greg Abbott and how he governs Texas. News Nation Senior National Correspondent Brian Enton is here. Everything that you got last night from your source. The FBI took dozens of classified documents. Was confirmed today. Including top secret, sensitive, compartmented information in two specific areas. And it was reported by multiple other outlets today. They were there from 9 this morning until 6.30 tonight. That is just a remarkable scoop. Excellent reporting. Congratulations again, my friend. Everybody followed your lead. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Your Buick preps itself. That's so you. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Kinda got a six cents. And a head up display. <laughs> They're here. You brought all these players in your Buick? Yep. So you. It is. At the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Pay no interest on Buick SUV models. Visit your Permian Basin Buick dealer. Locals know the best way to control expensive water costs is to install their own water well. Since 1981, the JR's Water Well team has been serving the Permian Basin, providing quality residential and commercial water wells that every customer can trust. Our customers describe us as outstanding professional with a quick response time and expert knowledge. 
Trust the JR sticker seen all over West Texas for your water well installs, maintenance, and repairs. Call today to receive the Big 2 10% off anything offer. The Ford Summer Supercharged Sales Event is here. So stop by your Ford dealer today. Check out our great offers on select Ford vehicles. And when you lock in your order, we'll lock in your rate. That's right. Place your custom order on a 2023 Ford F-150 truck and your interest rate is locked. Even if rates go up before your order comes in, you're protected. That's how Ford is supercharging your summer today. Order a new Ford F-150 and lock in 2.9 financing plus 500 bonus cash. Only at your best in Texas Ford dealer. Get ready for your day with meteorologist Ryan DePhillips. And now, your local weather authority forecast. Well, friends, happy Sunday. It was a pretty nice Sunday compared to yesterday. Some areas did get some rain, but for the middle of the area, we sat pretty chill. Taking a look at our Midland Sky Tower Cam, thanks to Ruth by Nicholas, we're able to see some really clear driving conditions. Roads not as slick as how they were yesterday, which is perfect. Now, the one thing you can't feel with these cameras is how hot it got earlier today. And speaking of the hotness, we reached a high of 87 degrees, which is below average temperatures. Our average is 94 degrees for this time in August. We have cooled down, but back in 1964, we sat in our triple digits at 102 degrees. Degrees. Taking a look at our lows, we did come in short for that today as well by a couple degrees. Sitting at today's low for 69. Around this time, our average is 71 degree temperatures. Hey, low at 69, but not as low as how we were back in 1947 when we were in at when we sat at 54 degrees. Definitely not too bad whatsoever. In this moment, we are cooling down because the sun has left us, so we are sitting at 77 degrees. Our dew point is 69. Our dew point is 65. Our humidity 69, and then our winds are traveling pretty, you know, steady northwest at five miles per hour. Now, the sunset did happen at 826 p.m. Not bad what? So ever taking a look at our satellite radar, you know, just a couple of areas with some rain over in Dryden a little bit and along with Alpine, a little bit in Van Horn as well. The middle of the area is sitting pretty clear. Now we are going to continue to see some more rain and because of the rain we have seen this past couple of days. Right now, Eddie is sitting at a flood warning. This will expire Wednesday at 315 in the morning mountain time, but not only there, Presidio has also a flood warning lasting until tomorrow around 3 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Definitely not too bad whatsoever. For our kiddos, though, do be sure to pack as well a umbrella and a raincoat and some rain boots if you have them. Off to school, we're going to send you off in a muggy 69 degrees. Heading home, we will be leaving you guys at 80 degree temperatures. Very wet kind of afternoon, so do be sure you have your rain gear. Now, 8 a.m. exactly 69 degrees for some scattered showers, and then by the time we get into noon, we'll be sitting at 75 degrees. Somewhat clearing, but we will have some areas with some rain and then by 5 p.m. that's when we will be sitting at 8 degrees with some more rain chances. Now taking a look closer at what we do have hour by hour by the time we wake up into 4 a.m. that's when the middle desert area will have some rain and then we continue on with a little bit of a break and then by 2 p.m. we will see some rain over in Marfa and then we have a small tiny little break all the way into our Tuesday morning around 5 a.m. that's when we will see some rain in Dryden but then we're clear for the rest of that Tuesday. Not bad whatsoever. Drain, rain safety. Avoid flooded roads. Turn around. Don't drown. And drive slowly in those puddles. Follow those rain safety tips and you shall be okay for the rest of the rain that we are going to be seeing this week. And all right, Avi, what you are going to do while you are out doing some sports is making sure you have your umbrella, your mm -hmm. raincoat, mm -hmm. your rain boots, and your rain cover gear. <laughs> okay, I'll make sure I get all that for the next couple week. And high school football season is basically here. And we continue on our 30 and 15 on today's 30 and 15 class 1a six man division two marfa the shorthorns have a long season ahead of them and are carrying a lot of doubt on their shoulders abc big two's rachel hallam went to the six man practice to find out how they look to switch things up this season a young team in a tough division and the marfa shorthorns are slated to finish last this season and they're ready to shatter those expectations. 
Finishing the 2021 season going 3-7 and seven overall, the Marfa Shorehorns have a lot of doubters from the outside looking in. Being young, you know, is, is, it's, again, it's a challenge. Uh, there's people that have told them, you know, you're probably not going to get, you know, a lot of wins this year. But for them, it only adds fuel to the fire. Yeah, it certainly does make us drive and push a little more than we can. And uh, we'll sometimes kick it in overdrive. But the uh, competition here is uh, no joke. Pushing me more. I want to win. <laughs> just win. I think we just, we just got to win. I want to win. The only thing against the Shorthorns is their lack of seniority. They'll have to rely heavily on the youth that is continuously present. It's kind of difficult because we look for leaders in our seniors, and it's hard when we only have one. But head coach Arturo Alferez wants to make sure the drive is in his young squad. We can always be, um, you know, kind of a little bit, you know, hurt because it's a, it's a young team, but the time they come in, the, the effort they put in, um, day in, day out, you know, it just it just motivates us more to give them more. And in a tough district with Buena Vista, Fort Davis, and Van Horn, the competition is fierce, and the young athletes have a long season ahead of them. I want to say it's going to be a very easy season, but uh, we got a few new recruits that, that we're trying to work with, so what do I be in our starting cube? Alferez is focused on changing the narrative in their district and proving they belong in the competition. District is still a few weeks away. We still have some uh, non-district uh, games that we can play and where we can mature as a team and then kind of um, specialize and kind of tune up our technique. In Marfa, Rachel Hallam, ABC Big Two Sports. All right, thank you, Rachel. Continuing today's 30 and 15, Class 1A, six-man Division I, Sands. A bump up in classification will certainly be an adjustment for the Mustangs, but with a new coach comes a new attitude, and the folks from Ackerley are ready for whatever comes next. The Sands Mustangs are turning the page in 2022. The program ascends to Division I, where they find themselves in a district with three of the top ten ranked six-man teams in Texas. To begin this new era of higher-level district play, Sands hired first-year head coach Ty Keith, who believes quality opponents will make the Mustangs better. Uh, iron sharpens iron, I believe that, and so we're, we're going to be ready to go by district time and hopefully you know, we can get in there and go compete with those guys and then we'll see what happens. We're not really intimidated just because they're good. I mean, yeah, they're ranked good, but we're not intimidated. We're like, We take one step by the way and just give it all we got. Keith takes over a team who made the playoffs in District 2 last year with a winning district record. He's already made an impression on the seniors who believe he's the coach to make the program better by doing it his way. He's really loud. He yells even when he tries to normal talk. He hypes everybody up even when we do wrong. He pushes us way harder than I've ever been pushed. And uh, our workouts have been way harder, like just uh, lengthwise and pushing ourselves. And uh, I like him a lot. Uh, I think we'll, he'll teach us some good stuff throughout the year. If the Mustangs are going to make any noise this year, they'll need to lean on their biggest strength, running the ball. An experienced line and a stable of backs has Sands believing they got a shot every week. We've got some really good running backs. Uh, we got Michael Diaz and Chewy Porras and Xavier Cisneros and Anthony Haston. You know, our line is steadily improved. I really like our line. I got two juniors and a senior on the line right now. My goal is is that we were a whole lot better football team by the end of the year than we were at the beginning of the year. I'm ready to see our development as the season goes. And well, Texas Tech head football coach Joey McGuire has announced Tyler Shogue will be the Red Raiders starting quarterback in 2022. The senior begins his second season in Lubbock after transferring from Oregon. In limited action last season, Shogue threw for 872 yards, six touchdowns, three interceptions, and completed just under 70% of his passes. All right, World Series matchup from last year. Astros and Braves in Atlanta first inning. Nobody on. The former Midland Rockhound, Matt Olson, crushes this Jose Urquidy pitch for a 2 0 lead off a two run shot there. And then Astros trying to come back down to Jordan Alvarez is the man to make it happen off of former Astro Charlie Morton. Ties the game with a two run base hit. Eighth inning, we're still tied at two, and Kyle Tucker hits it right through the shift. Guillermo Heredia bobbles the ball, allowing Alvarez to come all the way around to score. Astros go up 
three to two in the four in the ninth inning. Rather, it's a four to two ball game. Astros leading one on Yuli Gurriel right up the middle and hits it off the bag. A run scores. And it's a 5-2 lead for the Astros. It's now a one-run game in the bottom of the ninth. 5-4, Ryan Presley in to close for the Astros. And he strikes out Michael Harris. He goes down swing. Astros take it 5-4. Rangers and Twins from Minneapolis. Joe Ryan starting strong for the Twins, who are in a big AL Central pennant race. Nathaniel Lowe in the first inning. He goes down looking. Then... He gets Jonah Heim to swing and miss for strike three. Ezekiel Duran, the latest victim. Ryan, six and a third innings, allowing just one run on six strikeouts. Still no score. Third inning, nobody on. Marcus Simeon didn't really care. This was the one run that Ryan gave up. A second deck shot, a solo shot for Simeon, his 19th of the year. It's one nothing Rangers in the sixth now. And Jorge Polanco climbed the escalator and makes a beautiful catch there, showing off the hops. Twins still down, though, 1-0. And in the seventh, with the same score and two on, Trevor McGill in for the Twins. Brad Miller, though, will hit a bases-clearing single to extend the lead. Rangers all of a sudden got a 3-0 lead off the nice hit there from Miller. Rangers up 4-0 in the eighth before Nathaniel Lowe just obliterated that baseball his 18th homer of the year and after a close game early the rangers would go on to win seven to nothing well the midland rockhounds were back on the field today after their game last night was rained out today they wrapped up their series against the amarillo sod poodles and it ended unfortunately with a shutout loss and midland only takes one game in the series hounds are back in action on tuesday at san antonio all right, that's going to do it for me in sports. Rob, back over to you. Thanks a lot, Avi. And coming up tonight, the rise in child care costs is leaving parents coping with a new and challenging reality. How some parents are trying to find reasonable alternatives. We'll be right back. Now is the time to enter your livestock and poultry for the Permian Basin Fair and Expo. Livestock entries must be postmarked by August 12th and poultry by August 22nd. Entry forms can be found online on the Livestock Events page at pbfair.com. Chevy Silverado. It's got the power you want. And the capability you need to do the job. So you can get to the important work. Find new moments, find new roads. Enjoy the open road. Well-qualified buyers get 2.89% financing on all Silverado pickups. New models are arriving daily. Secure yours today. See your Permian Basin Chevy dealers. If your floors look like this, then it's time to call West Texas Commercial Cleaning. Using one of the most advanced floor cleaners available, they'll make your floors shine. West Texas Commercial Cleaning. Let us bring your floors back to life. Psst. Hey, parents. Did you hear that this little one napping right here can get the COVID vaccine? Yep. The vaccine is now available for every kid six months old and up. And of course, it's safe and effective. So talk to a medical provider today to schedule an appointment. Visit vaccinenm.org slash kids if you'd like to learn more. is the time to enter your livestock and poultry for the Permian Basin Fair and Expo. Livestock entries must be postmarked by August 12th and poultry by August 22nd. Entry forms can be found online on the Livestock Events page at pbfair.com. New at 10 tonight, a new study finds walking for 15 minutes a day can make a difference in fighting Alzheimer's. Researchers in Germany studied the data for more than 2,500 people between the ages of 30 and 94. Now participants wore an, acceler an accelerometer rather, for seven days to check their movements. Analysts also say, or analysts also measured their brain's cortex and thickness and volume. 
They found activities such as walking for 15 minutes or taking the stairs had a noticeable effect on the brain part which controls memory. Researchers also suggest physical movements can help fight off loss of brain matter and prevent Alzheimer's disease. Now to the families struggling with the rising cost of child care. Parents are feeling squeezed as they try to find someone to watch their kids while maintaining their work schedule. ABC's Deirdre Bolton has more. As parents prepare to send their kids back to school, many are struggling with how to cope with the rising costs of childcare. Everything just keeps getting more expensive and more expensive, including childcare. A new estimate from the Brookings Institution, first reported in the Wall Street Journal, found the price of raising a child through high school has risen to more than $300,000. To care for her child, it was easier for mom, Krista Crittenden, to leave work than to remain in her job. I was bringing home in a week like $300. And the cost of childcare is $150 a week. That's half my paycheck every single week going to daycare. In fact, 23% of parents, nearly a quarter, with infants and toddlers quit their job in the past month to care for their child. The pandemic and working from home is changing life for working parents. You just never know if it's going to get better or if it's going to get worse. And that's personally the hardest part for me. For others, including working mom, Daniela Cornu, it made life harder. I was having a lot of problems finding care that supported that flexibility. Nearly three in ten parents are juggling caring for a child while working full time. To manage that challenge, Cornu created her own child care, La Village Cowork, a co-working space where parents can work while their children play at the on-site center. I believe that giving working mothers the flexibility is a big piece of solving that puzzle. Parenting experts are offering tips in what is likely to be a year of rising child care costs. The top ones? Check with your employer to see what child care subsidies are offered. Utilize online resources to identify affordable care options. And consider organizing parent child care swaps. You have to get creative. You have to go out on the limb. You have to ask because a lot of people are willing to help. And up next, we hear the story of one of the nation's oldest farmers. His secret to a long life, up next. Get ready for your day with meteorologist Ryan DePhillips. Hello, I'm Bob Mills and I suffer from scoliosis. And after my back surgery, the only mattress that would help me sleep is the new patented Heirloom mattress. With its patented MicroTouch coil, inspired by the medical industry, it relieves those restless nights. If you suffer with back issues, I can't recommend enough the new patented Heirloom mattress. Another exclusive at the newly remodeled Bob Mills Sleep Spa. Now, let's get you out of pain. GMC Sierra. Premium and capable. That's professional grade. Step up to GMC with 0% financing on these GMC models. Visit your premium basin GMC dealer. is here with award-winning internet, TV, and mobile. Let's go. Giving you the power to get closer and go farther with speed and reliability. Let's watch with our new 100% fiber internet we're building, together with Optimum Mobile, voted number one in customer satisfaction, you'll get the complete connectivity you deserve. And when you combine Optimum's award-winning connectivity with our 24-7 customer service, your future is only a connection away. Tonight. We got a good one for you tonight. The sharks are biting. Name something a man finds in his girlfriend's car makes him suspect she's serial killer. Dead body. That's a good clue. Celebrity Family Feud. New ABC Tonight and stream on Hulu. One of the country's oldest farmers is marking a major milestone. ABC's Lindsay Davis has his remarkable story. Earl Malinger has a lot to be thankful for. Just last week, he celebrated 105 years on this earth. 
still tending to his 1,000-acre farm in Oslo, Minnesota. He's one of the oldest working farmers in the country. There at the kernel. Growing sugar beets, wheat, and soybeans. I like to be out with people and look at the crops. Well, I call myself a windshield farmer now. These days, he hires others to do the field work, but he still makes all the decisions for his farm. He's seen many advances in farming over the decades, from using hand tools to modern machinery today. In fact, he credits farming with helping with his longevity. Farming is a very good business to be in. It's exercise, fresh air, and you keep active. One of his secrets to living a long life? Keep moving. Once you do it, quit moving, you go downhill pretty fast. He started golfing at 75 and played until just a few years ago. And for more than 30 years now, every Tuesday, you can find him here at a group for widows and widowers. Mallinger said he feels blessed to have spent his life farming and enjoying the fruits of all his labor, which now include his large extended family of 60 great-grands and grandchildren, sharing these words of advice today. Be humble, and with the help of God, you don't have to worry. You can don't sweat the small stuff. Probably somewhere where his crops are, there's the fountain of youth. What a great story. That was Lindsay Davis reporting. And coming up after the break, Bridget will have one last look at the forecast. Stay with us. Midland College presents the Greatest Piano Men, a free high-energy rock and roll celebration of the greatest piano icons in music. 7.30 p.m. Saturday, September 17th, Al G. Langford Chaparral Center. Visit midland.edu forward slash piano men for more info. At Priority ER Care, our luxurious setting is run by dual board certified emergency and family medicine physicians. We treat our patients like family. At Priority ER Care, we've seen it all, we do it fast. A new Chevy is the smart way to hit the open road this summer. The smart way to road trip and seek new adventures. Go a little farther this summer in a new Chevy. Find new get up and go, find new roads. Well qualified buyers get 2.89% financing on most 2021 and 2022 Chevy SUVs when you finance with GM Financial. New models are arriving daily, secure yours today. Chevy drives Texas, find new roads. Wonderful adventures are coming, it's true. And a bright future awaits only you. Raise your hand if you want to be a teacher. Culligan High Efficiency Water Softener saves money on salt, detergents, and cleaning supplies, and time spent cleaning. Get softer on your water and wallet. Culligan, the only water that comes with a van. Cooking is my greatest joy. I kind of lose myself when I cook. I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I came close to losing my life. I went through two rounds of chemo. Because of the hardship that I went through with finances, this house was on the auction block. Texas Veterans Commission assisted me with financial assistance to keep my home. I'm just so grateful to have this, this service. Let's take one last look at that seven day forecast. Now we're gonna have multiple days of rain, so different opportunities. The one thing I will say is make sure you have your raincoats, your rain boots, your umbrella, but most importantly, when it comes to driving in the rain, make sure you are driving safely. Do not av avoid flooded roads and also drive slowly in those puddles once you reach them. Tomorrow is gonna have a high of 80 degrees. It's actually gonna be the coolest day of the week, but for the most part, definitely not too bad. And last night, something a bit absurd. Miller High Life is unveiling its new dive bar ice cream. The dive bar contains hints of, get this, tobacco smoke flavor, dark chocolate, and caramel. It also has 5% of alcohol and a sprinkle of carbonated candy to give the frizziness of a freshly poured beer. Ah, sounds refreshing. Uh, fans from all parts of the U.S. will be able to get a six-pack of the unique treat at Tipsy Scoop and Goldbelly.com. Of course, buyers must be 21 to buy them. Guys, thoughts? You're saying there's carbonation in ice cream? Is that, is that that's what you different? Just said? I was gonna say that's gotta be a different kind of texture than normal ice cream. Then, right? I mean, that's gotta be something different. This is the science and innovation that I live for. <laughs> yeah, I, Putting I alcohol so. in ice cream, and then I guess 
making some fun out of it. I don't um, know. I like the dark chocolate caramel combo. That's a that's a lethal combo there. I think that that can work for me. That's a choice. That, that yeah? is a choice. You're, on, you're not on that, Bridget? No? I'm not. Nope. <laughs> I like that. I'm, I'm a big fan of that pairing. Whoever ends up buying it, you have to let us know how it is. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna keep my money in my wallet. Yeah, first. I want to I want to hear some reviews first before I commit to that. Well, that's all the time we have for news tonight. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll be right back here tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. for Good Morning Basin. Good night.